Well, to discuss this, let's talk to Deborah Denno, law professor at Fordham University in New York, and from Philadelphia, John Lott. He's the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center. Thanks, both of you, for joining us. John Lott, do you support these Arkansas executions? I think having the death penalty both saves lives in terms of deterring crime and also saves money. I think the fact that you have the death penalty on the table allows plea bargains for many expensive first-degree murder cases that otherwise would have to go to court. And I think, you know, the bottom line, though, is that by deterring criminals, I mean, just look at what just happened in South Carolina with the Charleston church shooter. Mm -hmm. The fact that he was willing to go and accept uh, a first-degree life sentence, please, as long as the prosecutors took the death penalty off the table. I think that's just a perfect example. Okay. Of how criminals, how killers want to avoid the death penalty. It shows deterrence. Okay, Deborah Denno, despite the race against the drug expiration clock and the rush to execute these men, John Lott supports the killing of these men. Do you? Well, actually, Mr. Lott never answered your question. Your question pertained to the Arkansas killings. He started just talking about the death penalty generally. First of all, he was wrong because the death penalty, everybody knows it's far, far more expensive uh, to have a death penalty than to lock prisoners up for life. That's number one. Number two, it's not a deterrent. That's been shown so over and over. And number three, the Arkansas uh, executions are illustrate the, the country's problematic use of the death penalty, given that uh, the drug manufacturer is now suing the state. Uh, for using its particular drug. So let's stick and look at the Arkansas uh, case, which Mr. Lott is not doing. Mm -hmm. Deborah, there are convicted rapists and murderers among these men. Um, do you question whether the death penalty is actually the proper punishment for them or the way in which the death penalty is being carried out here? Are you principally against the death penalty? I'm not principally against the death penalty. I think if the death penalty were administered fairly, I. I uh, wouldn't have anything, uh, a problem with it. The, the problem is it's not administered fairly. Uh, the execution process is a complete debacle. It's extremely expensive. Uh, the state of California has already spent over a billion dollars on the death penalty itself, and it hasn't even executed anybody in, in 11 years. So I, I think it's a, it's a disaster. It's been widely recognized as such, and it's an economic disaster. Mm -hmm. So, John, in a fair system, Sure, go for the death penalty, but the system's not fair. That's why Deborah's against it. Doesn't that sound reasonable? Well, I mean, just take the last point about the cost. I mean, if you just look at the appeals process for the death penalty, it is very costly. But what she's ignoring is all the first-degree murder cases that don't go to trial because they accept a plea bargain. First-degree murder cases are very expensive. And if you have somebody who has special circumstances, so it's not just doing the types of crimes that you mentioned, but they have to do something else also, like kill multiple people or engage in some other type of uh, heinous <laughs> felony that's there. If I, if I can go and say to them, okay, I can't give you second degree murder, I'm stuck with first degree, but I'll take the death penalty off the table, you have all these plea bargains, and those are very expensive cases, and she's not including those. And as far as deterrence goes, you know, you look at the academic studies, the vast majority of peer-reviewed academic studies find uh, that the death penalty deters crime. And you just have to see how frequently these killers take a plea bargain in order to avoid the death penalty okay. as evidence of the deterrence effect. There. Okay, so Deborah, let's, let's get Deborah. prosecutor. Okay, Deborah, the, you know, plea bargains, you, you have these guys confessing and taking plea, plea bargains. Isn't that a benefit? I don't accept Mr. Lott's uh, argument about the plea bargain. First of all, he's offered no statistics whatsoever, no study uh, to show that that's the case. That's number one. I, I'm not aware of any study that shows that there's a cost savings because of plea bargains. Uh, number two, we, we already know time and again, there have been multiple studies throughout the country how expensive the death penalty is, and that's including everything that Mr. Lott is, is talking about. A death penalty so case is, is far more expensive. And number three, this is about justice. Uh, Mr. Lott only focuses on the economics of this issue. This is supposed to be about fairness. I, it's ridiculous that the state of 
uh, Arkansas is, is speeding up executions merely because a drug is, is expiring. Mm -hmm. John, 152 death row inmates have been found innocent since 1973. Are they, what, collateral damage? Well, I, I don't know of one single case where uh, somebody who is innocent has been executed. You know, if you want to, these people are equivalent to being on, uh, you know, on life imprisonment in a sense. But look, when you say 152, look, there have been like 200 uh, people who various violent crimes generally because of DNA evidence have been found not guilty but the, or innocent. But the problem that you face is that you're talking about over 40 years. No, but, you're talking about tens on, of John. millions of violent it's 100, crimes it's during 152. that period of time. Oh, hold the, on just for a second. I mean, if we just stick to that number, 152 people not, have basically lost their not. lives. Many of them were on death row for decades, right? And they were exonerated by DNA and so on. Doesn't that tell you that while you don't have to be principally against the death penalty to say, hey, maybe the system gets it wrong, so perhaps we need to be cautious about this. You have to go and take into account the number of murder convictions that you have generally, and, and, you're ta and violent crimes generally. I mean, you're, for all DNA cases, you're talking about a little bit over 200 cases. And that's for all types of violent crimes, rapes and robberies and other types of things. The rates of mistakes that occur uh, is, is very low. But more generally, you have, to, you have to deal with the fact that there's not one of these guys, if, even if you didn't have the death penalty, they would have been in jail anyway. They would have been there for life imprisonment. And, and, not, and not one of these cases were these people executed. Deborah? Not one case can you point to where an innocent person was executed. Deborah. Uh, Mr. Lott's not familiar with the literature in this area. There have been ex uh, numerous cases where it was clear that somebody was executed and that they were innocent. That's number one. And there's been a substantial proportion of these cases. We know of that. That's been written. I mean, uh, the, the people that these have been published articles and statistics on this very issue. For Mr. Lott to say that no one has been executed, that we know of as being innocent, is, is simply is, is simply inaccurate. That's number one. Number two, there have uh, numerous people have been released from prison. They have been on death row wrongly. Uh, and it's been shown that they didn't commit the crime at all and that they were uh, that they were on death row for decades and then released and found to be mm -hmm. totally innocent. Deborah, so he, yeah. he, he's they would have been in first degree murder cases. They would have been in jail for, for their That's, life in any case. Okay. The question is That's a fair executions point from you, John. that are okay. there. Fair, fair point from you, John. Deborah, let me ask you, I know you're against, you sorry talk? to interrupt you. And totally inaccurate. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Let me ask you, Deborah. You're against the rush to execution in Arkansas. And of course, you know, for many people, the fact that the drug is running out and they're sort of rushing to execute these men, it's very icky for them. Despite that, and despite the fact that some people have gone through torture, if you like, through botched executions, 88% of the 1,449 executed people in the United States uh, were executed by lethal injection. This is again since 1973. Do you accept that it's still the most humane way to kill someone who's convicted? It's not the most humane way to kill someone who's been convicted. It's one of the least humane ways to kill someone uh, who's been convicted. Uh, we've, we've found that. Uh, part of the problem is that these uh, most of these inmates are under the effect of a paralytic drug and they can't move or show, show their pain. But, uh, uh, of the 11 lethal injection executions in California, autopsy evidence shows that six of those uh, executions, those men did not have sufficient uh, sedative at the beginning and that they were conscious and aware uh, when the second two drugs were, were administered. Deborah, this how would you do it? How would you do it differently? What would be a more humane way? You the more humane way would be uh, by firing squad, and I've written about that in some detail. Firing squad is quick. Uh, brain death happens within a within a method within a minute, and uh, of the three modern executions that we've had in this country, the those uh, firing squad executions have gone off without a hitch. Okay, John Lott, bring back the firing squad. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I have no problem with bringing back the firing squad, but you know this issue that she was just bringing up with regard to it being humane, this has been litigated. She's lost. Her side has lost multiple times on this, and it's just an example of how. 
you know, she's not trying to pick kind of what's been decided by the courts as, uh, as the standard of evidence. She's taking an advocacy position that one side brought up, and they've lost time after time the claim that she's making about the use of these particular drugs being inhumane. And it's just an example of, you know, you know, how far she's willing to stretch. Okay, so it's slightly ad hominem there, so I'm gonna give you 20 seconds, Deborah, because I've got to wrap, but 20 seconds to respond to that, please. Yeah, Mr. Law is simply not familiar with the litigation that's existed in this, in this, uh, in this area of lethal injection. I mean, courts have been, uh, um, have recognized widely that there are problems with these lethal injection drugs. Uh, that we've had the lowest number of executions in 2016 that we've had since 1972 because right. of all the problems that this litigation has shown. Okay, Deborah Denner and John Lott, unfortunately, we are. And out that's of time. not ad hominem for her to. Okay, oh. Okay. I mean, I'm she... out of time, John.